Wow. All right. Welcome to season one, episode six of the bullpen. Everything that you never knew you needed to know about scholastic journalism and publications. Okay. So this one, I will still try to keep under 10 minutes. Can't promise. It's a little theory heavy. I don't have a demonstration for you. We're not using a certain kind of uh, uh, app or program. Uh, I just want to talk about what makes something newsworthy. You could probably use this uh, if you're not in a newspaper or yearbook class and uh, you got to come up with some current event for a social studies or an English teacher. Um, obviously, this is something that uh, you can do when you're brainstorming ideas uh, if uh, you're somebody that works for our school newspaper at Boyer Valley, the, the student voice uh, with Mrs. Roberts, this would be something to help you out. But I don't want you to think that this doesn't work for yearbook, which is why I'm posting it, why I'm recording it. <clears throat> These are things that can help you make a decision about what I need to take a picture of or what pictures do I choose that somebody else has provided for me that I could use on a layout. Okay. Uh, hopefully you'll see what I mean. I'm sure it would be better maybe if I had examples, but like I say, I don't want to make this an hour long thing. I want this to be under 10 minutes. So here are some textbook things that make stuff newsworthy. Okay. So in other words, people are going to want to see it. Right. So, uh, one, we don't necessarily have to worry about so much for yearbook because we're covering an entire school year, right? From August to May. Uh, so as long as it happens during our school year, we can put it in our book. Okay. It goes without saying that you don't need to find a picture from uh, last year that would not go in. You don't want to have a picture from 2019 in the 2022 book. That's you, you just don't do that. But if you're dealing with uh, current events or you're dealing with the school newspaper, you know, yeah, you don't have something from three months ago, have something now. Uh, and it's because the difference between journalism and history is history is, you know, last year to millions of years ago. Whereas journalism is, hey, is this still a thing? Okay, so proximity. Hey, well, uh, sure, you can have things that don't happen on campus. Of course, you're going to have pictures that are uh, uh, away games that'll that'll happen. Right. So again, for um, current events, a lot of times teachers want you to to worry about world things. Uh, this is one that. Mm, you know, you could break the rules maybe if there's a issue uh, that concerns your students. Maybe it took place at a neighboring school or neighboring district. I don't know. Uh, but uh, usually uh, if you're in Iowa, you don't need stories from Florida, right? It, it kind of might depend on what the other elements of newsworthiness are, whether or not. But proximity has to do with how close is it to you? Is it your town, your school, <coughs> etc.? <cetera. coughs> Here's a tricky one. Prominence. <coughs> when my kids were in junior high, uh, I used to talk to them about how you, you got to be careful because there's a difference between popularity, power, and prominence. Uh, and they can't gesture if I'm off camera. Po popularity, <laughs> prominence, and power. And they're three very different things, although they often overlap. Well, <sighs> newspapers, you're going to end up with this too, but yearbook is definitely going to deal with this. You're going to have people complain that, why are the same five people always in yearbook? Look, we get that there's 30 people on the basketball team, um, but there's five of them that made varsity. Oh, sorry, maybe there's 10 that made varsity, but there's only five of them that are on the court at any given time. And even then, you know, there might be one or two that are actually making shots. Other people are doing other stuff. They're making a screen. They're doing defense. Likewise with football. 
frankly, you may not always get a picture of your quarterback. You're probably going to have lots of pictures of receivers, you know, people that are running backs and they catch the ball and they make a touchdown. You know, um, yeah, you want to try and mix it up. You want to have more pictures of as more people as you can. That's coverage. And uh, our publisher, Justin, says uh, a theory that you want every kid in your school in the book three times. Three. You know? And that can be hard to do. Uh, but prominence, basically, you're, you're not pro- prominent because you're popular. It's not that everybody likes you. You're not uh, prominent because you're powerful. It's not like you're the bully or you um, are, you know, everybody listens to you. You're prominent because you're well known. When I was a student, I was the editor of my high school newspaper as senior year, and there's 500 some kids in my class. We had a big 1A school. There's more people in my school than the town that I live in now. It's something like 25, 2600, you know, more than 2,000 people. And um, I didn't know everybody. I didn't go to all the parties. But because the newspaper came out every three weeks and people would see my picture on the uh, page two with the op-ed with my column, uh, and, or they heard my name, you know, more kids knew me than I knew them. You know, so um, like it or not, uh, not only are the kids who are in more activities or more clubs or more sports going to show up more often even those kids, it's the kids that, um, well, they're the difference makers, they're the influencers, people that score the points or make the touchdown, uh, they're probably going to get in there more often. Granted, that's not to say that you shouldn't try to get other people in there, but prominence is a powerful thing that makes things newsworthy. You don't necessarily need to have an interest in Joe Schmo who got to be uh, but you, you do want to hear about the kid that you know blew away the ACT and is a National Merit Scholar. You now that's prominence. Uh, something does something. Consequence. Um, just the kids are going to complain that my friends aren't in it. It's only these same people that are the popular people when really they're the prominent people. Um, they're also going to complain if they're on the volleyball team and you have just pictures of practice or you have pictures of some game that didn't amount to much. So you kind of got to watch this, especially if you're a really small school like ours and you have really small staff and you can't get your own pictures and you need to borrow them. Uh, you know, maybe um, look at their schedule and uh you know, maybe you don't want to have all your pictures from one game for one thing. You know, it might be that the photographer took great pictures, but they're going to look at these 10 pictures on that page and see the same, the opponents are wearing the same color uniform. And they're like, did you only get pictures from one game? You know, so if there is a, uh, uh, well, for example, um, we've only got one page to go left on our yearbook, and then I can put it to bed, as they say. We can, we can be done um, with the 2020-21 yearbook. But we got our girls' golf team went to state. You know, so I'm waiting to see if we have some pictures and what the results are, you know, because they won everything or they do pretty well. We're going to want to have that in the, our yearbook. If we don't, you know, we're doing everybody a disservice. So the consequence, the result, is it an election? Is it, uh, you know, kids are horsing around in a picture? But uh, what are the results? And by the way, consequences are something you can put in the caption too. You know, uh, turns out this kid broke their ankle when they fell out of this mount that these guys were doing to be funny for this picture. Okay, so consequences. What are the results? Um, human interest. Does it uh, uh, provoke something? Inspire people? Tug on their heartstrings, make them laugh or giggle. You know, um, if a dog is crying at its uh, former owner's grave for three days, human interest. I uh, think about um, back when I was in high school story that we put in our school newspaper i think it ended up being in the yearbook too uh you know special ed kid kid with down syndrome 
uh, and, but he's starting a business. He's an entrepreneur and he's uh, selling bagels before school and, you know, just selling, selling them to teachers. And, you know, so if anybody's doing that, yeah, it might be newsworthy, especially if it's like a fundraiser for a club. But the fact that this kid maybe struggles, you know, struggles academically, struggles socially, uh, but yet they're, they're doing something that you wouldn't expect them to do. Yeah, maybe you're um, got a little bit of uh, ableism there with your prejudices, but you know, it it got some newsworthiness because it's interesting. People are going to say, "Whoa, what's going on with this?" So human interest um, conflict. And uh, probably we've gone over 10 minutes already, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to talk fast and think fast. <sighs> My problem with this one as an adult is that, unfortunately, this is what drives television news. Okay? Uh, people like it. We like blood and gore. We go to the hockey game uh, not to see our hockey team win, but because we want to see somebody lose some teeth. We go to the NASCAR race, not necessarily because we follow one particular racer, but it's exciting when they wipe out against the wall and do they take out a couple of other drivers with them. Unfortunately, part of human um, interest, uh, part of uh, human nature, is that we, you know, we like a little bit of drama. Now, whether it's sad, melodrama, and it's ridiculous and corny and unnecessary, or whether it, there's something genuine there. Now, um, many years ago, back in 03, 04, uh, we had a whole grade sharing agreement with another district. And uh, there was a lot of drama and a lot of conflict in that because there were some people that it was just so opposed, and they got out the vote, and... Um, the kids that were enjoying coming to our school uh, felt almost betrayed. They felt really sad because what they decided to do is instead of merging with our district or continuing a whole grade sharing agreement, uh, allowing us to absorb them, they voted to dissolve their district. So those kids would not be able to have a bus ride anymore. And the state came in and split up the district into four different surrounding districts. There was a lot of conflict there. So a lot of drama. Uh, <laughs> whether or not that's really something you want to cover in your school newspaper or in your yearbook, I don't know. Because uh, these days that can get you in a little bit of trouble whenever there's kind of controversy. But, you know. Um, sports, for example, if it's the crosstown rival, uh, you know, it's the, the team that you, you know, you, you broke a, a losing streak and you finally beat them after so many years or you name it, uh, it's going to make for interesting coverage, interesting pictures, uh, being in sports, it doesn't have to be a huge consequence, uh, or prominence in their conflict, but, um, it's more interesting if you have your player and your opponent's a player. You know, if you can have two players, opposing players, and the ball, then you've got the most interesting sports picture. Doesn't mean you can't have a sports picture with just one person, and you, you can have a sports picture without the ball in it. But you know, conflict it does some of the best thing. Last one is novelty, and the old joke that they always talk about in uh, journalism classrooms is dog bites man, no story. Man bites dog, there's a story. Okay? So uh, just something that's unusual, you don't see every day, some novelty. So uh, a lot of uh, advisors and yearbook staffs probably had to do something with the pandemic and with wearing masks or with going virtual or hybrid and Zoom meetings and digital school and all the rest. Um, it was a historic year. You know? So how many yearbook covers are going to have uh, fabric masks on them probably for the 2000, 2021 2020, 21. Wow. I've been at this too long if I'm talking like 20 years ago. Anyway, those are some elements of newsworthiness. Get them? Got them? Good. Go back and write them down if you want to, if you're taking a journalism class or an English class. But uh, keep in mind uh, when you're picking pictures or taking pictures for your book and keep them in mind definitely for brainstorming stories if you're on a newspaper staff.
Uh, have a great summer. Take care. Talk to you later.